Welcome back to Axis and Allies, the 1998 edition of the game. So I've already done a Let's Play with uh, Germany of this game. And I figured we'd just jump back to it since it seems like only a few views for this game and it seems, seems like people like it. We're going to play the USA this time and we're going to do a couple things differently just, um, for the setup. Uh, you'll notice that here like in the game menu I have like these like five star Generals Yamanoto, Montgomery, Rommel, Zukov. These are all actually generals um, from World War II that uh, they're being represented as like the difficulties of these games. So if I was playing USC here, you see Eisenhower. Here's Patton. He's like you know one of the famous loudmouth generals, I guess. And then there's like Bradley. Um, for Japan, there's Yamanoto, Tojo, and Hikitake. I don't know who they are, but anyways, um, UK also has Montgomery, Alexander, Dempsey. Uh, Germany has Rommel, Manstein, Kelsring, and USSR has Zukov, Timoshenko, and Konov. I know, um, I know, like you know, a couple from like USA because Patton and Eisenhower are fairly, are fairly famous. Eisenhower obviously went, became one of the presidents of the United States, and um, Patton, of course, is you know loudmouth for all that. Um, so, anyways, these like some like the uh, generals and all that. We actually uh, set the difficulty this way. I'm actually gonna do a couple things differently this time. We're, we're gonna play the USA, obviously, but. I'm going to set like the UK down to Alexander, and we're going to set down the USSR to uh, Timoshenko. Just to make this a little bit, um, I guess, harder for me at least, and uh, get like the CPUs a little bit of a chance to win. Uh, or at least um, make it more interesting. Uh, same thing with like uh, preferences here. We're going to do a couple things. We're going to give the USSR an advantage. And, um, or not the USSR, we're going to give the access to the advantage. We're going to restrict the USSR and return CERN, so USSR will not be allowed to attack until the second turn. That's the restriction. And, um, let's see here. Let's also... I could do a couple other things, I think. But, you know what, let's just, like, leave it as is. This is good enough. Um, that'll be, like, the settings for this game, and let's just begin. So. Here's the USSR. They're going to be restricted from attacking, but they can still do a few things, like build stuff. And he's going to send that uh, transport there, and the submarine probably is far away. A lot of what he's doing, as you can see, is kind of similar to what the um, Five Star did in like his first turn, if you remember that, or if you uh, played the game enough to recognize it. So he'll just do that for the first turn. And uh, here's Germany's uh, first go. You notice that he likes to build infantry too a lot, Rommel. Because infantry really are really powerful in this game, even though they um, aren't the strongest unit. There's a you know, standard thing what the Germany do. Um, attacking this way and that. The four star. Um, Four star generals actually represent what uh, the tutorial for this game actually rec recommends you do each time. Um, the, there's actually a tutorial which gives you like a sort of like a idea of what you can do with all these um, factions. And um, each of these factions, uh, they all have it like these like uh, starter strategies. And for Germany, obviously, there's one one. They can blitzkrieg and hit uh, um, Anglo Egypt. By like transferring some guys, moving some guys over. They, they hit Caucasus, and one of the reasons for hitting Caucasus is that um, basically it's easier for them to defend the Caucasus, I guess, and um, it like pr it hurts the um, guys here. The uh, Russians are doing counterattacks if you hit there. All of those um, the strategies are over based on what do you guys do before you do as well. So it, this time you can see this guy building infantry and transport. So he's not building on um, you gonna build stuff on. Uh, India this time. He's just going to try and uh, focus on the um, European theater right away for himself. And there's the UK taken, or uh, you taking in place. Kind of different from before. Before, you know, he's building on India, now he's like focusing on the European African theater. Um, I suppose to talk a little bit more about the uh, um, the sort of gameplay you expect in here. A lot of it is actually really representative of what you had to experience, I guess, back in World War II, as like, you know, a master general of uh, um, one of these like uh, world, um, world empires. Uh, the the England um, English Empire at this point is obviously playing a very defensive game. They're having to protect their territories as they're under siege by Germany, who's like, you know, bombarding um, England in the uh, um, Battle of Britain and um, 
he has to walk to Afri African uh, territory in search of being um, basically molested by German forces. Eventually, though, um, you also have like the later parts of the campaign. The uh, Americans come in. Oh, here's a battle with uh, me. Of course, this is you know what happened last time. The Japanese attacked the fleet in Central Pacific. Okay, I'm gonna lose this, and we'll lose our carrier too. And hopefully, I do get some damage in. Nope. 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 Oh, this is gonna be bad. Notice how I just kept a submarine here to like be like can fire for your um. If I do damage here, and I didn't do any damage, so that's horrible. Japan is toasting me there. But this is like to go on a little bit more. Basically, the um, the sort of like strategies you see here are very reminiscent of what you, uh, you know, saw in World War II. The Japanese are like um, initially attacking the Americans, trying to like establish a boundary um, before the Americans counterattack them and like you know start taking back their territories. Because basically, all of the American um, Industrial powers in the um, American countries, and those don't get taken for a long time um, if you're playing like the Axis in this game. And it looks like I forgot to put on the uh, names of all these places, so let's actually do that. I actually reinstalled this game, so um, let's see your text on map. This, uh, yeah, we'll do this. Resume the game. So there, now he's got the text of all the places. Uh, we're gonna skip weapon development this time, I think. And first things first, I want to. What do I want to do? I want to like get like guys here in the um, Western USA. So let's get a transport, a carrier, and another transport, and we'll drop them in the Northeast Pacific. The reason for doing this. It's just to sort of prevent the Japanese from getting the advantage of taking like Midway and the High Wine Islands. I don't want to have them uh, destroy me. Uh, what they uh, suggest in this game, the American strategies are either focus on the Japanese theater or the um, European theater. If you go after Japanese and you know you're taking the weaker of the Axis guys, if you focus on the bigger guy Germany, then you're taking on the bigger guy who's more of a threat at the uh, you know start of this game. Um, I suppose what I want to do right away. We're gonna take my tank and this might be a bit suicidal, but we're gonna try and take French India with this tank. And I'll send this here too. I don't wanna lose that tank, but you know, if I do, I do. Um, I can't really do anything with this fighter here, so we're not gonna bar with him. I can counterattack the Japanese here, so that might be something I want to do. We'll uh, send you here, you there, and you there. And can I hit him with this? Yes, I can. We'll send up two fighters, and I'll try and destroy those initial uh, ships there. I also have some guys over here I could use. Um, taking back India would probably be a good idea because even though these are like, you know, my territories, specifically the Chinese territories, it's more important that I sort of hold off. Um, the Japanese are taking the English way of says England's the really the big guy who's going to be holding off um, Germany and just, you know, places here. And the thing about the Americans is that they're like, you know, the, the reinforcements for like the Russians and the United Kingdom. If um, you don't reinforce these guys fast enough, like Germany will just roughshod Russia and Karelia and they'll take all of like Africa with, you know, without, without fought. So you really have to play with your allies to sort of help them out and keep them alive as the Americans. I think that's all we can do is attack those uh, three places. So let's get to it. We'll go here first. That's a miss of a tank. But I got him with the bomber. And he didn't get me. So we took uh, French West Africa. And it turns um, English because this, all these territories except for Libya and Algeria were initially English territories. Um, we'll go back here to uh, take revenge on the um, Japanese. There goes a sub, because he'll, he'll target a sub, obviously, first, because it's camp fodder. And there goes the battleship. Now, note that the transport doesn't get any damage, but it's being, I'm going to use it as camp fodder if these guys get hit, which they don't. Um, so, didn't really demonstrate that, but basically, there's that out of the way. And then we'll go down here to India, and hopefully we'll take India back for 
um, the Britons. Damn. Ow. Okay, we got India back for England. Ow. Um, we're going to lose our infantry. So, there's um, basically uh, India taken, or is, is infantry or kill? I didn't actually take it back. Hopefully, he'll smart to move a guy down here, or maybe the Russians will move a guy down in India with their tank. Um, so, that's done. We're going to move these guys here. And, I mean, it's terrible to lose these, ter these territories, but there are only two IPCs, and the Americans, they don't really have to worry about it too much. The thing is, that'll happen, help the Japanese really quick, which is a problem. Um, I've only got two movement points, and I can't really get this bomber anywhere safe, so we're just going to put it in Algeria for now. And, um... I guess we're going to move you guys up here. And we'll move... We'll leave these guys in Eastern USA, those two, I guess, for now. You notice that the last time they're, like, they're moving to Eastern Canada, so that they can be ferried over to... United Kingdom pretty quickly, but I'm not going to borrow that right away since I don't really have any transports to begin with in the Atlantic Theater at the moment. Um, so we're going to say done. Oh, you must be moved. Okay. Um, I suppose it has to go to either Midway, Western USA, or Hawaiian Islands. I guess we'll drop it on. Oh, I don't want to lose the bomber, so let's just drop it he uh, here on the Hawaiian Islands first, I guess. So, there we go. Two guys on Hawaiian Islands that protect them. And we'll say that's done. And we'll just drop the carrier here. And two transfers here. And this is going to be like a defensive fleet to sort of hold off the Japanese from rush-shotting me over here and set up, set up the, you know, uh, um, they're basically their defensive wall against me from retaliating against them. So, German forces gain ground. And, um... You know, much like last time, the Japanese and the Germans are basically going to get the advantage early on because they have the troops, they're the aggressors, and everyone else is going to falter. I didn't lose anything to begin with, but I will probably just turn because Japan will probably take that empty province I left. So, Alright, so this guy's going to be able to retaliate this time against the um, Germans. Alright, so um, just to go on a little bit about strategies, by the way, what Russia is doing here is taking out Eastern Europe. If they take out Eastern Europe, that actually cuts off German from reinforcing Ukraine SSSR, and uh, it prevents them from immediately attacking Karelia too. So basically, he'll um, basically prevent the Germans from rough shotting him Karelia right away. And he took back a caucus because that's easy to defend. Too bad he didn't take back India, but whatever. Maybe the uh, United Kingdom will be able to take back their guys with the guy in Persia there. This game could be a lot more interesting to have like strategic resources like oil and stuff. Like, if uh, you're, you're a World War II buff, you know like Germany was uh, strapped for oil while the United Kingdom had plenty of oil, obviously, because they are, they are the owners down here of these two provinces. And it looks like uh, they're going to blitzkrieg all the way down there. And are, are they going to take it? Oh, UK defeated Germany, and take it back that. And they just lost their tank. Okay, so UK managed to kill that tank of the um, United Kingdom, and we'll hopefully be able to take back the promises that uh, are being taken from um, the United Kingdom. I basically want to damage this guy before he gets the economy ruling from Africa, because that's IPCs that Germany can use to sort of keep his war machine going. Much like in um, uh, World War II, basically what I'm doing here I'm basically going to like do my American African campaign more before I start bombing with Europe. And it looks like he's going to actually do a missile attack on Western Europe. Interestingly enough, that's a little early to be doing this. And he's saying Eastern Europe too. And he's going to go after battleship. He's taking back India. What else is he going to hit? New Guinea takes that. He took back India. He repelled that attack, sadly. He repelled that one, too. Uh, Germany won that battle. UK defeated Germany, but lost its battleship. Took New Guinea. That's a lot of interesting um, work by the United Kingdom, I guess. It was kind of a 
uh, or how can I say it? it is really really weak kind of but it's it, it, it was interesting I don't have to worry about Germany taking the United Kingdom though because they don't usually build transports they go after Russia that's how the um, Germans played initially in um, World War II by the way they went after Russia because they basically wanted I guess to get oil and they decided to attack Russia for it I guess or so um, the historians claim up oh, there goes that, and I assume he's going to hit uh, me in China. No, he's hitting the guy in India. Oh, he hit me in China too. And I see me back there in uh, Central Pacific. There goes China. He missed with the fighter, so I won't die instantly in the first turn. Bears can't fire for you. Basically, the transfer is dying first, and then we'll go after Battleship. Transport missed. Hopefully, I get that fighter. Nope. That was terrible. There goes the Battleship. I got the fighter, though. I'll try and get his Battleship next turn. Interestingly enough, it's uh, kind of different how like this game sort of plays compared to, say, World War II, where... In the Pacific Theater, it's like a battle of carriers and fighters, where in this it could be a battle between like actual ships. But that's just how the game pieces are set up. He's going after Australia, I think. They're going to take back India for United Kingdom again. Um, let's do a bit of research this time. Nope. So that's what happens when you fail. You just, you fail. You just spend your money and fail. Don't get anything. You saw what happens when I succeeded, but there's a fail. Um, I suppose I want to get myself a battleship again for down here. And why not? We'll get one more transport. Actually, a submarine. So we'll get those. Comet move will be very simple. It's going to drop the transport here, this here, and we'll take out the battleship. And that'll take at least... Um, his, you know, his ability to attack with battleships and all that over here out of the way for the initial moment. Um, I suppose what I want to do here, we're going to just go like this and this. And I guess that's all I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to hit those two places. So we'll take out... Um, a couple territories and over here I guess we'll uh, take out India. I keep going after India because it's, it's, it's the big, you know, the kuna for the allied forces over here and all these Japanese territories are, you know, pretty much guarded by Japanese. The one thing about the Japanese is that though they're weak, they have lots of troops and they uh, protect their prized territories fairly well. Alright, so there's another one to return to the United Kingdom. There goes this guy. Oh, he got my tank. Well, I'm not going to lose the bomber, so we'll just uh, take out his troop there. Hopefully, the United Kingdom tank over here can do something. Um, we'll go over here, and we'll take out this one battleship. The carrier has one attack, by the way, on the attack. But I'm more or less brought over to carry these guys. Nice. And I can just leave these guys on the carrier so I don't have to move them this time. They can defend, you know, like they're supposed to. And India. And we got the soldiers time. I'll take back India for the United Kingdom. Alright, bye-bye. So we're done. Um, I suppose what I'm going to do, I don't want to lose this fighter by, you know, moving it back here to Sink Hang, so we'll move it up here in the Novusburg Grisk, or whatever it is. And, um, we'll send you here. We'll send those troops that I have in Eastern USA over in a moment. And we'll say that's it for this campaign. Oops, I have to move the bomber too. We'll move the bomber. Where's a good safe place to move the bomber? I suppose I can move it to Persia. But let's, um,. Let's move it to Gibraltar. You can make use of Gibraltar, and this is one of the reasons you can, you know, how you can use them. I can use this like to 
launch attacks at Germany or Southern Europe if I want to with that little space. And uh, we'll go over here and we'll just drop the battleship in the submarine. This will be the last sort of like guys from dropping down here. Right now, it's basically, I've uh, I've taken out most of the important ships and all that from the Japanese. So now it's more so that I just want to start transporting guys over here to the European theater. So I can either keep going after Japanese, but I think I'd rather go after Germany because in this game, Germany is like the strong guy and you really want to take him out because he's more devastating to the Japanese. And all right, so there's our ton, our ours, uh, battle one. There's a picture of Montgomery, so the Britons are gaining momentum, obviously, because they're taking back their territories, or I'm taking back their territories. And the USSR takes in our turn. It's going to build a couple of armor, five infantry. Finland and Norway is a really good place to uh, take because um, it's very hard for the Germans to counteract with, unless they have a transport. And unless you take Karelia, then no one can really get it. So he looks like repelled, sadly. He took back Eastern Europe, and he took back... Oh, and I took that one, too. So he's taken back uh, a good amount of territory. The Russians are holding their own fairly well. And the Russians collect 27 IPCs. Germany takes a move. He's probably going to decimate the... Uh, Russians at this point. I'm going to probably take out Eastern Europe. Oh, he's going to take his transports too. Oh, there goes the tank. And he's dropping a couple more guys over. There goes Syria Europe, or Syria whatever. So yeah, there's the England do doing a little bit of devastation. There's a lot of guys there. He's not really moving a lot of guys to Western Europe. Not that he really needs to at this juncture, but... Alright, 36 IPCs. The United Kingdom's going to take his turn. He's got no troops at this point, so yeah, he's building up his troops again. He's already got his transports already, so now he just has to start moving the troops over. And he's sending troops down to guard himself in Algeria. And he's, you know, he's reinforcing his, uh, my fleet over here in the Central Pacific because that transports his cannon fodder. And he's collected 27 IPCs. Japanese are probably going to rush shot us a little bit more. There goes the UK at SSR again. And he's going to take Soviet Far East with the infantry. Oh, he's attacking me in India. Well, those guys are expendable. They're just here to sort of hold off the um, Japanese from taking as much of their territory as possible. Okay, hopefully do a little damage. There goes an infantry. The infantry is not really a deadly one here as the fighter. And yeah, there goes the other infantry. Hopefully uh, the other one. Nope. Oh well, this fighter is going to be like playing a defensive game, honestly, at this point. Looks like he failed to take the UK SSR, which is interesting. He probably should have taken that, but CPU isn't necessarily smart in this game. Well, my fighter's done what he can to sort of like stave off the uh, Japanese from taking like all those places, but it can only do so much. And there's another fail of weapons development. Um, at this juncture, let's build, I don't know, let's build a transport, four infantry and two tanks, we'll get all that. Um, this transport's actually being a bot over here, so one, two, three, four, five, Okay, so I think I can go six of this. Let's try and kill this transport. I want to get rid of it because before you know Germany starts sending more troops down here. Um, and we'll send you guys 
I'll leave you guys in there. I'm going to send these guys over to reinforce Algeria, I think, in a moment with that. Um, I sort of want to keep the Japanese from decimating me here in the Central Pacific, so let's just go down here. Let's keep these guys down here. That'll uh, discourage, hopefully, this guy from attacking. And I guess that's pretty much it. I could go after here, I guess. But, no, nah, I don't think there's enough room. So, well, that's enough for now. Um, done. Let's actually go to world map. So, I didn't really show it off time, but this sort of like shows off how like things are advancing at this point. So, I can click here. Let's go after this one little ship. I missed. There we go. There goes his transport. That noise is out of the way. That's the only comment I did. Let's move you back to Algeria. Move you over here to Algeria. Hopefully I'll discourage attacks on um, Algeria from the Germans. I'll move you up to defend Karelia. So that's going to be a little bit more defense for the Russians. And you guys are there. I think more or less I moved all my units. I don't think I have any other units to move. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, as you can see, the Americans really lack in units at the beginning of the game. They have lots of industrial power to build up units, but they don't have a lot of units. Let's um, dump a couple of those guys there. We'll just leave to dump these guys over here. 34 IPCs. So, um, I lost a little bit of ground, obviously, but I didn't lose my air problems, I guess, yet, so. I haven't lost a whole lot yet. I'm going to keep lose that air province, but it's not a big loss to lose these provinces. The main provinces you want to keep is the USS A are obviously um, Western USA and Eastern USA. The rest are, they're nice to have. Obviously, you want to keep Mexico so it's easy to defend, but they're not essential to winning the game. They just help producing stuff. Nice, he took a England that time. And we uh, got repelled. Oh well, hopefully he'll be able to defend uh, Corellia because he's got a lack of troops over here. And I'm not sure that's going to be enough to defend Corellia against Germany. I got my fire to sort of help, but it's not a lot of help. I assume Germany's going to attack Corellia if he's smart. And he actually separated his troops, which is really stupid of him, because I can rush shot that one little troop. And there's the attack on Corellia. I did this early, and it really sabotaged the Russians, but, I mean, Germany usually takes his time in this game. And USS repelled the attack. Good. He separated his troops for some reason, I don't know why. Interesting attack idea. He took uh he took it though. I guess he's sort of surrounding India over there to Japan for now. He's reinforcing Finland, Norway for some reason. That's something you can do, by the way. You can reinforce Finland, Norway, so it can't be attacked by the Germans for any reason. He's building lots of transports for some reason. Transports aren't necessarily a bad thing to build, but he's building them in mass. Oh, he's going to take French man guys. No, he's taking South Africa. There goes South Africa. 
that's kind of like what I did, or what I would do with the Japanese, but um, it's kind of odd seeing CPU do it. There goes my transport in the Northeast Atlantic. Oh, I got a fighter. That was unexpected. Oh, well, I'll have to rebuild the transport again. I'm going to have to start building up these transports. So, there's Japanese expanding its territory fairly well. They've taken off China, they've taken India, they're starting to push into um, the Russians' territory. And this is how the Japanese really work, by the way, in this game. They should, they should push into Russia, help out Germany, take out Russia, then focus on other guys. There's another fail. You notice I like to do weapons of them a lot with the Americans, but not necessarily a smart idea all the time. Uh, let's build free transports and armor. Comet move. Um, let's take out here first. Not going to do anything up there, I don't think. I think that is all I'm doing at this point. I can't exactly uh, move over here to attack Western Europe because I want the troops, sadly. So combat, we're going to take back uh, French Equatorial Africa. And we got with one of the infantry too. The bomber's really the one who's going to do the damage, but it's nice to see the infantry get attacked sometimes. Okay, we'll move uh, you here. We'll actually move these guys down here since they got the bomber in. We'll um, basically focus on uh, protecting that bomber for over here. Let's move one of these guys up here. I'm going to take these troops. Because it's not like he can't attack Midway Island right away, and I kind of want to defend it a little bit. Move all these guys up here to defend. Right there. And we'll build one, two, three, and a tank. I'll get some more infantry next time, I guess, to reinforce Hawaiian Islands over there. I guess we're going to leave, leave this on Corellia for now. This is kind of an open target, though. I don't want to lose the fighter, but it's more important to protect Corellia as much as possible before. Um, Russians get side swiped by Germans for losing it. Hopefully, he reinforces Corellia really well. Looks like he's taking Ukraine SSR. He's trying to take a UK SSR. So that's taken. That's a failure. He's like focused on also trying to defend himself from the Japanese at this point. Hopefully that's enough to discourage the Germans from attacking Krillia right there. Eight guys in my fighter. Alright, you're concerned weapons development. You got 12 infantry. What are you going to do, Germany? Uh, you're going to attack Ukraine SSR again. I assume he's going to move those guys in Africa around too. And he's reinforcing Western Europe now because, you know, we're starting to get a few guys over in the Atlantic, free transports. And that's sort of encouraging him to sort of think about Western Europe a little bit. Very free IPCs. He's attacking Ukraine SSSR. And he took it too. That one went brown because that was initially Germany's at the start of the game, so that's conquered. It's not liberated, but it conquered. It's funny how they're like bouncing troops all over the place. This is one of the things that the CPUs I don't really understand. They just do it because they do it. This isn't this isn't exactly a high-powered game in like sort of AI. 
development, by the way. This is 1998. The AI isn't exactly fairly developed. It, it, it does its purpose, but doesn't necessarily do it well. He's finally building some infantry. Oh, there goes, uh, yep, there goes that tank. He's moving troops all over the place. I really have to take out the Siege of Japan or something. But there's way too many transports to go through, I think. Alright. Yay, we got six. We finally got something. We got heavy bombers. That's awesome. Heavy bombers are rocking. So, I now got the heavy bombers, and you're, you're going to see something interesting about these heavy bombers. We're actually going to buy... Um, one heavy bomber, two infantry, two more infantry, and you'll see the heavy bomber in the action in a moment. So, this is the heavy bomber. We'll use it to... What do I want to do? I could actually go like this. Let's go down here, attack South Africa, and you guys can jump over to the front magic guys so we can get to. So we'll do that. Um, one, two, three, that's four, so you can't really get down there. You're going to just keep defending Corellia. It's not bad for me to defend Corellia. Uh, what to do next? I think next what we're going to do is we're just going to leave these guys here and just attack like this. So here's the heavy bomber. Heavy bombers are really cool because um, they still have a four uh, dice roll, but no, you'll notice something when they attack in a moment. So, these guys have two attacks. Now the bat bomber, one, two, three, boom, boom, boom. So he gets three dice rolls instead of one. So there's what the upgraded heavy bombers are like. This is where weapons development really starts to rock, because you can get some really n nice uh, developments from it. Of course, the CPU is not smart enough to really uh, understand those developments, so they don't do it themselves. But whatever. Okay, we'll dump you there, and hopefully. He could attack me, hopefully he doesn't. Um, okay, we'll move these tanks over. One, two, three. And the purpose of pointing there is just to sort of... Uh, these will be the vanguard guys I'll be sending in to start designating the guys over there in Africa. We'll have to start focusing on Europe soon. Right now I've been focusing sort of like an offensive game to guarding my territories over here and helping the United Kingdom take back Africa. But it's now started, start, time to start um, trying who to go after. So, done. We'll build this heavy bomber in uh, Eastern Europe. Yeah, we'll do it in Eastern Europe. Two there. Two there. So British forces advance. I wonder if he'll def defend Ukraine and SSSR. He might do that, by the way. In this game, it's not like the uh, USSR is like against helping uh, you know, and vice versa. So he might defend Ukraine and SSSR for a few guys. Took USSR and held them there. You know, it's like a, how he attacked China there, so he'll like come down like trying to help you too. He might drop a couple of guys here too to defend. Yep, there we go. So he's like defending Ukraine SSR for a few guys. And I assume he'll drop a couple guys on Krillia. So, interestingly how this game plays out, you know, everyone's friends on the Allies side instead of this, you know, sort of cold enemies. And he's going to take back the Ukraine SSSR. So even with a little defense, it's not going to search Germany, so I'm trying to take it, and they did take it. Okay, 
considering weapons development, doing no weapons development. Six infantry, one armor, one carrier. Looks like he's just going to develop stuff this time around. No attacking for the United Kingdom. And he dumps a lot of guys in Finland and Norway and he moves a couple over to Karelia and one guy up the Caucasus and a guy on the Persia. I'll note that just because this guy's a four star CPU or a three star AI, they don't actually get, you know, necessarily weaker. Whereas, you know, Patton's like not an idiot. He'll still like fight as he's supposed to. Same with like uh, Alexander for as the Americans and um, the guy for the Russians. And there goes Australia. Packs back that. And he moves a couple more guys on too. For some reason, he's still building um, a lot of uh, transports. I suppose it's in, you know, constellation to what I've got here. He's building lots of transports to discourage me from attacking him. Um, I, I'll skip this for this time because we already got that going. Let's build um, two more bombers because bombers are going to be what I'll be using more or less here. Um, let's send one of you guys there, one of you guys in here, and you go up to there. And send you guys here. One new guy there, one new guy there. And that should be enough to take out the rest of Africa and like restore it back to the United Kingdom. You can go. I could actually hit him with. Uh... Let's do that. Let's send you over, all the way over here. And. I guess we'll say that'll be it for now for the uh, American move. So I take Belgian Congo, take Kenya, Rhodesia. Here's Anglo Egypt San. So we attack the Vangement Tree, he actually gets a hit, so there's the battle one already. And of course, boom, boom, boom. Overkill. All right, let's return this back to uh, control of the um, United Kingdom with one for me. So they'll be able to turn green because it's initially a territory that is controlled by Germany, but now controlled by the Americans. So there's um, there's that all really taken back. So this is sort of interesting how it's working out. The Germans have more or less been forced on a defensive Interestingly enough, the Japanese, though, they're being left unchecked. They're actually pushing toward the UKS, um, USSR and they're taking out the UK over here. And I've only gotten hold off on like the uh, front over here on this divide. So what's next? Um, we're going to move you down here, pick two guys up. I know I'm dropping these guys here, like to sort of discourage him from attacking these places. So we'll drop all those guys there. So I basically got three guys all the way up here. I've got three guys there and three guys there. I'll probably move these guys back to Midway in a moment, just in case this guy's thinking about, you know. Let's attack the last thing over here, just because I can. Um, the bombers have to get moved, so let's move him. Uh, where's a good place to move you? I could... Uh, one, two, three, four... Can't move you that far, so let's just move you here. And we'll move you to Algeria too, I guess. And we'll move you guys over here.
I'm gonna have to start building some troops to send over to help the United Kingdom over here. Bombers are great, but they're only so good. We'll send you guys over here, though. They can, like, join the uh, front uh, helping against the Japanese. So, that's, like, sort of, like, the end turn for um, a little bit of what, you know, the Americans are doing. You can't really see it, but basically we stopped the uh, African again over there. Japan's, like, kicking ass over here, and German is, you know, being forced on the defensive over here. I'm going to... Um, say that that's a good, you know, part one of the American campaign. And, uh, nope, I also got the heavy bombers down here. I'm going to uh, cut the recording and we'll just go into the second part, which will be fighting back the aggressors.